The Arizona Signal Watcher DXing Video Blog Episode 1, Super Loop Antenna Part 1, Introduction The so-called Super Loop Antenna was developed by Bruce Conti as an extension of other antenna designs um, that involve large loops such as uh, flags, deltas, and pennant antennas. And the idea here is that the feed line and the terminating resistance are at ground level, whereas some of these other designs have, have these at, at other points along the antenna. Like the delta antenna, the Superloop excels at low angle reception, which is excellent for long distance reception that involves um, a reflection or scattering from the ionosphere. The Superloop antenna allows for broadband reception into the long wave band down to 200 kilohertz or lower. Here you can see the forest of ground-based differential GPS transmitters across the western United States centered near 300 kilohertz. The frequency range of aviation non-directional beacons is also in the long wave portion of the radio spectrum. In some parts of the world, broadcast stations also operate on long wave. On the other end, we get reception into the short wave and ham radio bands to at least 10 megahertz or so, depending on the exact size of the antenna. Here we see the 30 meter shortwave band from 9.4 to 10.0 megahertz. However, the super loop is probably most useful on the AM broadcast band, where one has to deal with competing signals from many directions, and one can take full advantage of the antenna's directionality. Here we see a portion of the band during typical nighttime conditions with signals on every channel. So this loop can take on various dimensions. Here we have H for the height, L for the length. Uh, the antenna is rectangular. And at one bottom corner, we have a transformer to match the high impedance of the loop antenna to the 50 ohm impedance that you're most likely going to need to come into your receiver, whether that's a, a uh, uh, sort of a physical receiver or a software uh, based receiver such as an SDR. And so this can be types like RG8U, RG8X, RG58, uh, other possibilities. Now in principle you could also use 75 ohms uh, for this and use standard RG6. It's not going to make a huge difference but most likely if you use 75 ohms here you're going you're to have to um, uh, couple it to uh, 50 ohms at some point. At the other bottom end, we have a resistor, and this is the uh, terminating resistance. And the idea here is that we have these two vertical segments, which um, if you want to combine those and create some different antenna pattern than the omnidirectional pattern that you normally get from vertical antennas, well, you have to basically tune this so that the two uh, vertical segments phase against each other. And so essentially this resistor is a phasing resistor. So what you do is you pick a resistance such that you get a combination of these two antennas producing a cardioid antenna pattern. That is, it, it only has one null on one side and then the signal gradually increases up to a peak on the other side. Now the signal null is in the direction of the resistor and the signal peak is in the direction of the 50 ohm feed line. Without this terminating resistance, the antenna behaves more or less like a uh, quote unquote normal loop antenna where it will have uh, two nulls and two peaks. But the idea is with a, an antenna with one peak is if you have any particular uh, station or stations that you want to null out in one direction, you can do that and still receive stations at the opposite end. It also, because of the cardioid pattern, gives you a fairly broad um, receiving pattern, uh, which can be useful in situations where there's a lot of uh, variability and propagation such that um, you might get uh, a particular station in one direction and then that may fade out and another station in a slightly different direction will fade in. Now interestingly, this bottom wire can actually lie right on the ground. Um, this is not a grounded antenna, and that's actually one of the advantages of this antenna is that it has a floating ground. It does not need an earth ground 
um, to operate well. And that's an advantage, uh, number one, for portability. And number two, for those of us who live in places where soil conditions are either not very, con or not very conductive or where it's difficult to um, dig and put a, uh, some sort of uh, uh, a, a grounding rod deep into the ground. Portability of this antenna is actually a major plus. You can build supports um, out of, say, a wooden, a wooden base and PVC pipe extending upward to support the antenna, and those can be put into a vehicle. The wire, of course, doesn't take up much space, and neither do these, uh, the two electrical comp components, the uh, uh, transformer and the variable resistor. And so you can throw all this into your vehicle and take this anywhere. Now a large design, which might be 20 feet high and 80 feet long, uh, maybe isn't as portable, but in fact people have come up with ways to support the uh, vertical parts here uh, such that they can actually be transported in a vehicle. Even on the smaller sizes, uh, this antenna still works very well. Now one major downside with this antenna is that because it has this large resistance, which is uh, something like a thousand ohms or so, it'll vary a little bit on either side depending on exactly how large the antenna is and exactly um, what you're tuning. But um, that large resistance makes this a very inefficient antenna. And so you would never use this as a transmitting antenna. But for receiving, well, as long as the antenna has a good signal-to-noise ratio, then you just need good amplification. And in fact, that's a necessary uh, aspect of this antenna, is that you're going to probably need, uh, for the smaller antennas, um, something like 20 or 30 dB of amplification. For the larger antennas, maybe not as much. Now we're going to talk about these individual portions of this antenna and how to build it in subsequent videos. But first, let's go to a little bit of, of video um, showing an actual antenna set up and operating. Here we see a 7 foot by 24 foot super loop deployed in a small area in front of the house. There are two supports to give the loop its rectangular shape. These supports have wooden bases to which PVC pipe is bolted. The top and bottom wires are held fairly taut but small deviations from rectangular do not affect performance much. At one end of the bottom of the antenna, we have the impedance matching transformer box with the antenna connected on each end. The coax feed line leads to the indoor receiver. Note that the bottom wire can lie directly on the ground. On the other end of the antenna, we have the variable resistance box. Here we set an appropriate termination resistance to get the proper signal null. Again, the antenna wires are attached at each end. 